If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. For part A, we can write out the formula that relates current to current density. We have J sub A representing the current density, and for part A, that was given to us as follows. So we can substitute in this expression for the J sub A. Now to understand where we're going to derive an expression for dA, we can consider the following picture. So here we have a picture of the wire. It's a cross-sectional picture of the wire, so we're sort of looking down the barrel of the wire. And we do need an expression for dA. So what we do is we find the area of a very thin ring cross-section of the wire. We can see that the width of that ring could be represented as dr. And then the circumference of this ring would be 2 pi r. And so the expression for this very tiny area of this ring would be the circumference, or essentially the length of that ring, multiplied by its thickness. It's essentially a length times a width, if you want to think of it that way. And again, the width, so to speak, of this ring is dr. And since we just stated that the circumference would be 2 pi r, we would have the following result of 2 pi r dr. So this will serve as our expression for dA in our current formula. Now, of course, that thin ring that we drew was only one differential element. We actually need an infinite number of them. So we need to integrate, essentially, from a differential element of radius 0 out to a differential element of radius r. So in other words, our limits of integration will be from 0 to r. Now, of course, we have some constants that we can remove from the integral. We have the j naught over capital R as well as the 2 pi. And note that capital R was a constant because that represents the radius of the wire. And of course, that radius is not changing. So we now have a relatively simple integral. We just have to integrate r squared, which of course becomes r to the third power over 3. And we're going to integrate this again from 0 to capital R. Remembering from calculus that we plug in the upper limit of integration first. We'll go ahead and plug in. And then when we plug in the lower limit, it's just zero, so that's actually going to eliminate that entire second term. We can then simplify this expression by canceling a factor of r from the denominator and numerator. And now we're ready to plug in the known values for j naught as well as capital R. Recall that j naught was given to us in the question, as was capital R. Notice that we converted capital R into the standard unit of meters by multiplying the millimeters by 10 to the minus 3. And this result turns out to be approximately 1.33 amps. So that would be the correct answer to part A. Now part B will be a very similar procedure. We just have a different current density given to us. So this is the J sub B value. And then right here is that same dA term that we derived earlier. Now to integrate this, we can remove the constant factors. So we can take out the J naught as well as the 2 pi. Perhaps we could then distribute lowercase r. We can then go ahead and integrate r, which will become r to the power of 2 over 2. And then we have r to the power of 3 over 3. But in fact, it'll be over 3r when we integrate. As before, we'll plug in the upper limit first into both the r squared and the r cubed. We can also plug in 0 afterwards. But again, that's going to eliminate that entire second term. In this term here, we can eliminate a factor of capital R in the denominator and numerator. We could then combine these like terms. We could reduce a little bit by dividing numerator and denominator by 2. And then finally, we can plug in the known values for J naught and capital R. And when we simplify that, we get a value of the current of approximately 0.666 amps. And that is the correct answer to part B. Now to answer part C, we simply have to recall that in part A, we obtained a current of 1.33 amps, which of course is larger than the current derived in part B. So the function that maximizes the current density near the wire surface will be the current density function given in part A. So that would indeed be the correct answer to C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I will do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.